Hello beautiful soul and welcome back to chat and channel session. Today's session is geared at those of you who are spiritual or consciousness or knowledge seekers and are always searching into the mysteries of life. These are some channeled messages that can help aid you in your journey and in your quest but also empower you in enjoying the other parts of life as well that aren't necessarily mysterious. So before we jump in to that let me welcome back following subscribers i appreciate you for being here and joining me again and for the newbies welcome my name is danielle hashtag damsel at these enlightened edits of damseldesigns.com that is d-a-m-c-l designs.com connecting you in with the dots of the divine design i am a spiritual empowerment coach energy healer psychic medium energy artist and so much more and this is chat and chat channel session where my guides and in some cases some of you present me with a topic and we do a stream of consciousness channeling on it to help support you in your enlightenment if you would like to participate in the chat portion of chat and channel provided that you are not driving or operating heavy machinery of course please feel free to join during the live premieres on my youtube channel at these enlightened edits or you may be there now welcome welcome or leave a comment or a question or review for me at any time you are listening to this timeless topic. You can also participate my favorite way, which is by getting out a good old-fashioned journal or the notes app on your phone or favorite device and doing some stream of consciousness writing along with me to tap into the energy of this channeling and gain your own insights with your intuition and spirit teams. If you are called to work with me personally, you could find ways to do that through spiritual session, digital downloads, enlightened merch, energy healing links and more on my website damseldesigns.com or linked in the description or bio depending on where you are listening to this podcast on with all that being said let us dive back in to today's topic so if you are someone who is always intrigued by the mysterious always deep diving always fascinated by the occult or figuring things out even beyond those means welcome you are a soul sister or brother or a non-binary friend of mine and I appreciate you being here and all your efforts to find the truth and the hidden truth in all things. That is certainly a passion of mine my entire life and in my belief in many lifetimes. However, I do want to recognize that there are other elements at play here as well. While I am someone who has always been involved in the mystery schools and aspects of reality for as long as I can remember, which is many, many lifetimes now, um, I do see that sometimes we are fascinated by this or sparked back to it because of trauma that we tend to experience in our childhoods. Now, not to be a downer here, I only bring things up for our empowerment and enlightenment, but in experiencing childhood trauma or in experiencing caregivers or older people than us when we are young who either are not energy responsible for themselves do not have understand or respect boundaries or have a lot of difficulties in life where we're not necessarily being supported and they're leaning on us or asking us to figure things out or if life circumstances are giving us pressure to do that and grow beyond our years to find or provide answers that are not necessarily the most healthy things for children to have to support or provide for as they are growing. These are the people that tend to be the ones who get attracted or attached to different aspects of understanding reality. Now, that being said, it is purposeful, in my opinion and experience as an Akashic Records reader and healer as well, these have been the only things or the most prevalent things up till now that spark us back to getting into the habit of looking for the truth and seeing the truths through the illusions of these realities. And that's important. However, it is also a key piece to understand, see, and respect that the reason that we get attracted and sparked back to this work in the first place 
can be from a pain point and pain points can magnetize things to us for the rest of our lives or multiple lifetimes if we don't find them, locate and work on healing them, which is something I'm very passionate about doing in my quantum succumb and shamanic energy healing work, which there is an application to apply for if you would like to work with me in that way personally, or you can start with a session, which is already on my website, and then we can expand from there if you like. But whether we work together in that or not, I encourage you to see the ways that your life has set you up for this exploration and appreciate that those were the things that started you down this path again of either astrology or numerology or reiki or any of the ways that we look to understanding reality and working through it or healing through it those are important things to work on right no matter what your path is no matter what modalities you are most called to or find most truthful or useful in your life in my opinion and experience it's important to also recognize now that you have those tools now that you've found those tools now that you are committed to exploring and finding the truth in all things and as many things as possible and also up leveling from there and seeing that the truth can be different for different people in respect of everyone's free will, perspective, and soul sovereignty, right? God, God is source universe is not going to look the same to all of us because they are part of all things and they can look however they need to based on the person and point of consciousness that they are speaking with, helping, or healing. So, our truth, the way it looks to us, may not necessarily be the truth for everyone and eventually we come to that point where we can see and respect and understand that and also appreciate the parts of truth that work for us while being allowing of other people's truths as well. But now that we have those understandings, now that we've found the modalities and are already committed to the path, we can start to look back and see the door that opened the path to us which probably is a pain point door and we could work on closing it so that pain no longer has to follow us down the path or project the path for us because i see time and time again and especially as someone who has gone through a great deal of shamanic initiations where pain or trauma are the opener in life i can see how if we don't close those pain point doors other pain points can say oh that's the way they learned before that's the way they up leveled before that's the way they expanded their consciousness before in pain or trauma or abuse or any of those things so let's try that again but at another level right and this is not the universe punishing us but it is our reality constantly trying to adapt as we learn and grow and until we learn the lesson that yes we can learn and be awakened to next and new levels through pain and trauma and disruption but there are also other ways there are ways to learn through great amounts of love through great amounts of kindness through great amounts of spontaneous awakening or enlightenment to positive ways of being as well and that doesn't mean that we need to bypass all the negative but we can start to see it from a place where we are learning from and more rooted and grounding and growing in more light first so that we don't have to continue the path that the pain point opened up for us and that way of learning only so i hope that's making sense for you as i am channeling this my guides are showing me an actual path and kind of the secret garden type door and opening that and seeing the path and the door that we're we're opening initially is this dark and dense and heavy stone door right it is a door of trauma or of abuse or of too much being put on us at one time in order to break down that former version of reality and once we've gone through that door and really committed to that path and picked up all the tools that we can and lessons that we can along the way in terms of how to learn the truths that we needed to learn to be the best version of us and to help inspire and bring truth to others we can look back 
and start to close that door. And yes, for you, depending on your trauma and quantum entanglement levels, that may require more personal energy healing works, but something simple that you can do right now to start, and for some of you, this may be all you need, is to look back and imagine your guides or your angel working with you to look back and command that door being closed and even imagine it you can bring a hand motion to kind of shut a door if you'd like and imagine it being closed and as you are closing it you are healing and you are hearing a deep sound of a heavy door closing and you are doing this not in fear not in the pain that once was to bring you to this point, but in gratitude saying, I am so thankful that that door opened to get me to this point where I am now and today, where things may not necessarily be perfect at this moment, but where I have picked up so many lessons and tools from that experience and from that pain point door opening for me. But universe with gratitude and love infinite love and gratitude i am saying to you now thank you but i am closing the door to that way of learning i no longer need to choose to open paths in that difficult way i'm closing that door and i am no longer needing to look back to that way of being and at this point You may want to take some breaks or come back to this when you can and write down any additional things that you may need to heal and work on from that former version of you, from that reality. There may be versions of you or your inner children that you want to or need to heal or integrate. There may be parts of your chakra system and try not to get overwhelmed. Just try to do some stream of consciousness writing and write them down. Anything that comes through to you at this time and know without any pressure on you you can always do this exercise again write them down and set them aside and say i commit to doing this in a non-linear order when i have the energy to do those things i know my higher self and my teams of light will step in to help me do them but i also know that these things no longer need to act as magnets or door openers for me And in doing so, you have deactivated or started the process of deactivating them from having the power or control over you to continually open pain point doors in your life. And so you can continue down the path and even imagine yourself with a backpack of the tools and lessons that you've learned so far. And at this point, you may imagine a detour starting to open up on your path. So put that list that you've made somewhere safe and energetically and in your imagination put it in that backpack that you have or that knapsack or whatever you call that in your language and if you see this detour it may look like just a different path opening up or it may look like a bridge or a rainbow bridge or an escalator but whatever it looks like to you imagine that on it and surrounding it there are gentler things Maybe these are animals, maybe these are plants or trees or just some better scenery starting to open up down that path and start to take that path instead. If you'd like, check in and say, am I ready to go down this path? If the answer is no, honor that and say, okay, universe, higher self, show me why I'm not yet ready to go down this gentler road and honor that and take those things into account and then ask how it's best for you to work on those things so that you feel more worthy and ready to go down that gentler road. If it's a yes for you, that you are ready to go down that gentler road, start walking it and allow that to be. And simply close off this energy healing exercise by saying, thank you universe for starting to ground this into me and my reality. I'm excited and grateful to look forward to the ways that it gets to become real for me. Thank you so much. This and better optimally across me and my space-time reality. And so it is, blessed be. And with that, I really trust in the ways that your reality can start taking care of you in more gentle and kind ways. 
I want to encourage you to also explore how you may have some hypervigilance about deep diving on these occult or mystery topics. I want to give you some more information on that. So if you feel in a very relaxed mood from the energy exercise that we just did, bookmark and maybe come back to this other portion later, or just relax and listen in and let it sink in however is right for you. But something that really came through very strong for me in my personal journey and then in my work with clients as well is that yes we now know and understand the reason that we deep dive on all of these esoteric realities and truths right and that's great to understand that and start to heal that about ourselves in order to receive better within our own life and then be more empowered to create better for others in the world as well but why do we do that and why do we want to do that Well, this is because initially we start this process so that we could better understand how to help the adults in our life. Then we continue down it as older people so that we can better understand ourselves and how to help others. And eventually when we're committed to that path of deep diving on truth, sometimes we can get caught in cycles of things like conspiracy theories or finding hidden toxins and things. And all of that is important. I'm not saying it's not. It is highly valued and important. However, a pattern that I found myself in and I saw many clients and family members and like-minded people in is that we get so caught up in the hunt, in the deep diving for these truths. Often we're using it as a form of escape to then run away from the version of us and our life and reality that is so uncomfortable and painful and difficult and the things that we don't know how to heal about our life and our personal struggles and ourselves. And because we don't know how to heal them, we maybe start off on that path to try to see how we can heal them. And then we get distracted in other truths and things that will help others because we still maybe have a code dependency wound or we may have a self-worth wound where we feel like others need truths about these other concepts more than we need truth about ourselves and helping and healing and standing firm and strong and stable in ourselves and in the lives we want too. We feel more worthy to help the world in these struggles and these things that are hidden than we do to use it to help ourselves or we just don't know how to apply it to ourselves so maybe we'll keep looking and deep diving and getting distracted even in the escapism of all these truths all these hidden truths, all these conspiracies, which that is a a very new term. Actually, that's only been around since the 60s as a way to actually dissuade people, in my opinion, from finding more truth. But that's besides the point. Um, But we get so distracted in the escapism of these things that we sometimes use it as a shield even from ourselves and from allowing or finding the things that will help us so that we can have our cup full in order to pour from a full cup cup rather than an empty cup when then presenting these truths and this information to others. And so if that's resonating for you, I want to encourage you and empower you in understanding that your truth and your healing and your standing firm and your having the abundance or time or energy for yourself and the things that you want in life is just as if not even more valuable at this point in time because until you can stand firm in your life and embodied in your life and truth it's going to be even more difficult for others to believe you in these truths that you are trying to help them find and heal with or change those aspects of the world that you see as unjust and unfair and yes those things are valuable and they need to be changed but the problem that I saw in myself and then in clients and then in so many people in the world is that we have the heart and we have the conviction and the intention to heal and change these things that are quote unquote the problems or the injustices or the way that the world or the powers that were take advantage of others. But 
we don't stand in enough firm energy of our own first. We're still afraid to stand in enough of our own truth that says, yeah, I may want to help and donate to others and others that are in need or being taken advantage of, but I still have not fully addressed or healed the ways that I need help as well, or the ways that I need more money for myself and my stability right now as well, or the ways that I was treated unjustly. So if we're doing this, if we're only trying to help or mostly trying to help others without also or first helping ourselves, the energy is going to be so split. It's not going to have enough, in my experience, momentum to actually change those things fully without maybe having to continuously cycle back around to change those things. So this is where we even have things like the civil rights movement, which yes, made many positive effects and changes in our world, but this is why we're still struggling with some aspects of it because people started that in a personally wounded place in some accounts, not all, but because people did not have the tools or the support or the time or the money or whatever it was at that time to invest in their healing first or simultaneously to what they were fighting for, those fights still in some instances continue in our world rather than come to a place of full resolve and grounding and stability and then the ability to move on to the next thing. So I want you to remember this next time you feel very disempowered or disheartened by what's going on in the world and not knowing how you can take your place to change it, I want to encourage you cycle back and see what you can work on for yourself first and then how you can work simultaneously to help or influence or positively affect that thing. As an addition for those of you who are like-minded in terms of understanding the dimensional levels, I want to put a note in here for you. The things that are hidden or occult or are the abuses of our world with injustice, those things, the things that people would class as conspiracy theories or hidden agendas, those are very fourth dimensional. Now the fourth dimension can be very powerful. A hundred or so years ago, that was the dimension people were trying to tap into and working to tap into to manifest their new and elevated realities. These are people like Neville Goddard, Florence Scovel Shin, and others who are still considered master teachers and who we're still learning from. However, the conspiracy, the hidden agendas, those things reside and the reason they're able to take effect on the 3D without most people realizing it is because they're happening for the most part on the 4D. So when we're obsessed with these things and finding these truths, now that we understand why we may be obsessed or attached and the habits we have about doing that, this is also because we're getting caught up in the fourth dimension. Now, I think most of you who are in line with dimensional work know that we are moving to the fifth dimension, ideally, and beyond. You know, I access many different types of dimensions in myself and in my work, so let's not also get caught up on the fifth dimension, but it is our current goal as a collective society here on Earth in most of my experience. And so as we are doing that, I want you to remember this habit. Anytime you're getting distracted, or disheartened by the conspiracy or agenda truths that you're finding or if you're obsessively spiraling in them. This is not to say ignore those things that you're finding because that's important information that you're finding, but also remind yourself, okay, I don't want to get attached here or obsessive thought here because this means that I'm continuing to cap myself in vibration on the level of the fourth dimension. Now, even if and when we've invested in our own personal healing, like we were just talking about, if we get caught up in this fourth dimension, even when we have enough energy to actually help and enough awareness to help and make change in those things, we're not going to be able to fully do it if we're trying to act from the same dimensional level that those things have occurred on. We need to act from a place that's from a higher point, a higher dimension, so that we can look down with enough perspective to actually implement positive change in it rather than try to work from the same level. Imagine if you were climbing a mountain and you were continuously trying to help people up the mountain, but you're only pulling them 
from the same level that they're already on. It's not really making much sense, right? So this is not to say that anybody is higher or better than anybody else, but this is why we work to expand our consciousness and points of reference and points of healing and have the healing to have stable, grounded truth in that place so that as we help others, we can actually pull them and then ourselves and then ourselves and then them up to higher points of being as well and healthier points of being as well and out of this place where humanity is being so manipulated and controlled and realistically in my opinion I'm open to yours as well but we really can't do that if we're continuously matching energy rather than rising above in energy from the things that we so disagree with now have your feelings feel the disheartenment feel the injustice of it all but also recognize that if you continue to feel that and try to act from that place rather than deal with and heal those feelings first and then use them as fuel it's going to be really difficult to make the headway that i know that you want to make whether that's from a personal injustice point that you are working to fix or a collective or worldly injustice point. So I hope and I trust that that helps some of you in your quest and in your mission, whether that is your personal life or your mission to help the world in the ways that you are meant to help it. Another note here is remember that although we may care about a lot of things and send love and positive vibes and healing with consent to a lot of people and things, it is not necessarily our point of genius to help with every single thing now this doesn't mean we don't care about those other things it doesn't mean we're bad people it doesn't mean we're incapable but it does mean if we commit more to where our zone of genius is to where our expertise in healing or understanding is then we'll be able to make more headway i also see people get caught up in this if they have a family that is big in the fields of activism sometimes they think that they have to continue that particular mission style of activism. In other words, if someone's field or family was very in line with helping with things like civil rights, they feel like, oh, well, that's where my mission obviously has to be. And sometimes it is, and it's a group soul family mission, but sometimes they just have the awareness of how mission and activism works, and then they can take it into their branch of zone of genius and help with something else. Maybe they can take it into animal activism or wherever their heart and soul are calling them. So know while it is valuable and valuable and so appreciated for you to see and honor the ways that your physical or soul family has or is currently helping the world and want to help in that perhaps you're meant to help with that up to a certain point of understanding and then take that knowledge into another branch of helping that's more in line with you and your soul's genius now i know we've gone over so much today and sometimes i talk quite fast because this is a channeling and it's presenting information to as many of you as possible in a timeless way so what i want you to do is remember that this is timeless this has messages for you right now where you are right now but it may also have messages for you when you're spiraling up to the next level of these lessons so i want you to bookmark this and come back to it whenever you need a pep talk or whenever you need that energy healing experience and technique that we spoke about earlier in today's session come back to it as often as and whenever you like take it in full or in chunks and i encourage you do that stream of consciousness writing or meditation next time you listen as well and be open to additional energy specific insights for just you please remember to like this and share it if you've liked it and feel that others would find it helpful as well. I so appreciate when you guys do that. Know that there are also ways to access one or more additional channeled meditations or channeled messages per month if you would like to become a paid chat and channel subscriber on Anchor Podcasts or Spotify Music. You will find ways to do that for a low price monthly cost. And there is also a free backlog of chat and channel sessions from before I started uploading across all the platforms that is available on my YouTube channel at These Enlightened Edits, or you may be there already, you will find that playlist, and you can keep up with me there on YouTube on any of these streaming platforms 
always on my website, Damsel Designs, D A M C L Designs.com, for sessions that enlighten merch, digital downloads, and the energy healing application and more. And you can also catch me on the daily, most probably on Instagram at Days Enlightened Edits. So I love and appreciate all the ways that we stay connected. I hope you are already a subscriber or a follower there and here at Chat and Channel Session. I am going to close this session for today and I appreciate you. I hope you feel more empowered going into your night or day and I will see you next time. Be blessed with love, light, and light codes. Love, Danielle. Hashtag damsel at these enlightened edits of damseldesigns.com. Bye for now.